This is Musings of the Shy Podcast. I'm your host, Rosia Shy. Hello, Rosia Shy here with another episode of Musings of the Shy Podcast. This is episode 143. Place a drop of water on the cutting board, place the dough on the board, and begin. This is the episode is defining uh, malleability. Uh, we, have, we discussed what malleability was when discussing the definition of segregated witness, which uh, the purpose of segregated witness was to address the malleability issue within Bitcoin. So we're going to discuss what malleability is in, in that relationship because one of the critiques, uh, which we eventually will do after defining uh, network segregated to and user activated software, is that the Bitcoin XT, Bitcoin Classic, Bitcoin Unlimited, and to some again, the sense, some of the critiques to segregated witness 2x is that uh, raising the block size doesn't address this malleability issue. It also doesn't allow for the ability to do these add on scaling uh, solutions like Lightning Network or shorteners, signatures, um, things of that nature. But the other thing is with the malleability issues that some people think it's um, a little bit overemphasized, if you will, slightly overblown, still important, but not as important as perhaps maybe raising the block size or addressing the issues or things of that nature. Uh, but when we do, when we do discuss um, all the downsides of the different proposals that have been put forth, about um, the block size debate, uh, what should be done with Bitcoin, we will discuss that. For now, we're just here to discuss uh, the definition of malleability and what it is. Before we get into that, the news. So this is from the BBC. Amazon and eBay, eBay image broken by photo buckets ransom demand by Leo Kylan. So a different kind of ransomware we're going to talk, talk about here. Eventually, we will discuss on both um, a word from the metaverse and here on Musings of the Shy podcast about ransomware. Okay, here we go. Uh, thousands of images promoting goods sold on Amazon and other shopping sites have been removed after a photo sharing dev- service charge changes terms. eBay and Etsy have also been affected in addition to many forms of blog. The problem was, has been caused by PhotoBucket introducing a charge for allowing images hosted on its platform to be embedded into third party sites. Uh, the company caught many of its members unaware with the change, prompting some to accuse it of holding them to ransom. The Denver-based photo bucket is now seeking a $399 annual fee for those who wish to continue using it for third-party hosting and facing a social media backlash as a consequence. The BBC received an automated response when it tried to contact the company and is still seeking comment. The policy switch. Photo bucket has been around since 2003 and says it has more than 100 million customers and more than 15 billion images on the server. Uh, part of its attraction to small retailers was the fact that it added as supported free accounts could be used to upload images of goods to a single destination from where they could be pushed to multiple outlets. On June 24, uh, June 26, however, the company published a brief note advising users to take a moment to review our updated terms and policies. About 500 words in the linked document was a declaration that the free accounts would no longer permit image linking to third-party sites. Many users realized the change only when their embedded images were replaced by a graphic saying their photo bucket account needed to be updated. The Devon-based seller vintage store, retro to go which sells its goods on eBay, was one of those affected. I was a quite bit of editing to do to the store owner, uh, Giga Killerberg, told the BBC. A bit of notice would have been unreasonable to expect. I would have deleted my accounts and would not use PhotoBucket again. Held to ransom. Some sellers are unwilling to pay the fee and had handled the change by uploading their product photos to a rival service. But the new policy also affected historical social media posts, blogs, and forums that were reliant on PhotoBucket. One of those affected is Stamp Boards, a forum where more than 17,000 members who discuss postal stamps and share images with them. Many of these pages are now filled with PhotoBucket upgraded demands instead of the photos of the stamps they once showed. They are holding you to ransom, site administrator Glenn Stephan told them and advised them not to pay the fee. You have no guarantee that they'll be in business in a month the way this disaster is rolling out. One digital marketing company says it's understandable that PhotoBucket had wanted to become less reliant on ads, but criticized the service of both the sums it was seeking and the way it had gone about the move. It came out of the blue blog, uh, Ron Karn's Acubus Digital. There are no announcements, no emails warning people that it was about to happen, and more importantly, no explanation. Bulletin boards across the globe are being crippled as previously vibrant threads with detailed images are disappearing. People who have used PhotoBucket for hosting these images successfully for over 10 years 
finding that they will have to literally start again with what for some amounts to a lifetime's work. But one expert said that the public needs to be aware of the risk of landing on a free and insurance. There are a lot of websites out there looking for advertising, and there's a finite amount of advertising spending to go around. And on any photo gallery and store site like this, this that relies on ads to offer a free service, you can only continue to do so if they have enough money coming in. So if you put all your photos in a, into any site or app like this, where it's not clear how they're going to continue financing their business, this, this then it could come back and bite you all at some point in the future. So we'll see what the fallout is for that. I'm sure it's going to be ongoing. Robot made pizza looks to shape up the market. Uh, this is from Geek Exchange, written by Jason Mayo. Robot made pizza looks to shape up the market. The technology could soon be coming to Domino's near you. As you mentioned here on the Geek Geek before, robots are starting to become a huge receptor of traditional business practices. Where automation transformed the factories of early 20th century, so too will robots replace those who have traditionally been required to create products. The retail, manufacturing, and agriculture sectors are all the beginning to embrace robotic workers as business owners look to increase both service fee and reduce the cost required to run their business. As it seems that your local pizza place may soon be embracing this technology as well. Uh, nestled in the heart of Silicon Valley is a company called Zoom Pizza. Founded in 2015, the company is much like any other pizza place you order from. You go to their website or use their app, and soon a delicious pizza will be delivered to your front door. But unlike your local pizza place that takes an hour to deliver your pizza, Zoom can have your pizza to your door in only 5 to 20 minutes. Why? Well, they use a robot to make their pizzas. Uh, founded by Julia Coll Collins and Alex Garner, the duo started the company in order to create a high-quality pizza that was both convenient and affordable. By using a series of industrial robots provided by ABB Robotics, the company was able to create 372 pizzas an hour from their single Silicon Valley location. Customer orders are automatically fed from the website and app into an automated machine, which then proceeds to automatically create the pizza. Using a series of conveyor belts and arms, the machine can roll dough into a pizza crust, dispense the spread sauce, and place a pizza in an oven for cooking. As for now, a human only needs to add the toppings, as it is difficult for the machine to differentiate between the different sizes, textures, and shapes of what people may want on their pizza. But as technology progresses, they may, that may too soon change. This technology allows the companies to make the pizza faster, cheaper, and easier than any of Though they only present in Silicon Valley at the moment, it wouldn't take much for them to expand. Little staffing is required, which means getting the business up and going wouldn't require any of the training usually needed. We also hard pressed to think that the big pizza chains haven't taken notice. As Don Rose, Pizza Hut, and Papa John's stuck it out, perhaps automation is what we get the most. And then finally, why Roman concrete still stands strong while modern versions. Scientists have cracked the secret to Roman water-based structures, strengthened and finding could help today's builders. Uh, this is from the science section of The Guardian, when I quote the their structures are still standing more than 1,500 years after the last Saturians snuffed it. Now the Roman secret of durable uh, marine concrete has finally been cracked. The Roman recipe, a mix of volcanic ash, lime, or calcium oxide, seawater, and lumps of volcanic rock, held together piers, breakwaters, and harbors. Moreover, in contrast to modern materials, the ancient water-based structures became stronger over time. Scientists say this is a result of the seawater reacting with the volcanic material in the cement and creating new minerals that reinforce the concrete. They spent a tremendous amount of work on developing this. This was very, very intelligent people, says Marie John Jackson, a geologist at the University of Utah and co-author of the study into Roman structures. As the author notes, the Romans were aware of the virtues of their concrete, with uh, Peloni the Exer Elder, waxing lyrically in his natural history that is impregnable to the waves and every day stronger. Now they say they work out why. Writing in the Journal of American Mineralogists, Jackson and colleagues describe how they analyzed concrete cores from Roman piers, breakwaters, and harbors. Previous works had revealed lime particles within the cores that surprisingly contained the mineral aluminous torbonite, a rare substance that is hard to make. The minerals of Jackson form early in history of the concrete as the lime, seawater, and volcanic action of the mortar reacted together in a way that generated heat. But now Jackson and team have made another discovery. I went back to the concrete and found an abundant tormite growth through the fabric of the concrete, often associated with phyllocyte, another material, she said. She said there was revealed another process that was also at play. Over time, seawater that seeped through the concrete dissolved the volcanic crystals and glass, with the luminous tormite and phyllocyte crystalline in their place. These materials, says the author, help breed to reinforce the concrete, preventing the cracks from growing, with structures becoming stronger over time as the minerals grew. By contrast, modern concrete based on Portland cement is not supposed to change after it hardens. 
meaning any action, reactions when the material causes damage. Jackson says, I think the research opens a complete new perspective of how concrete can be made. That we consider corrosion process can actually produce extremely beneficial mineral cement and lead to continue related resilience, in fact, enhance perhaps resilience over time. Finding offers clues for concrete recipes that does not rely on the high temperature and carbon dioxide production of modern cement, but also providing a blueprint for durable construction material for use in marine environments. Jackson had previously argued that concrete, Roman concrete should be used to build the seawalls for the uh, Sanguizese Lagoon. There are many applications, but further work is needed to create these mixes. We started, but there is a lot of fine-tuning that needs to happen to Jackson. The challenge is to develop the method that uses common volcanic products. That is actually what we do, We are doing right now. So malleability. Uh, transaction malleability, as defined by Bitcoin and Nikia. Uh, malleability is the primary reason or solution that SegWit was developed. And eventually SegWit, because of the nature of the way it was developed, allows for other additions to happen to the Bitcoin uh, protocol or code, if you will, where you have new, eventually have add-ons like Lightning Network, uh, short inner signatures and smart contracts. But for now, let's, let's kind of talk about uh, malleability. While transactions are signed, the signature doesn't cur currently cover all the data in the transaction that is hashed to create a transaction hash. Thus, while on comment, it's possible for a node on the network to change a transaction you send in such a way that the hash is invalidated. Note that the, just the change the hash, the output of the transaction remains the same, and then Bitcoins will go to their intended recipient. However, that this doesn't mean, for instance, it's not safe to accept a chain of unconfirmed transactions under any circumstance because the latter transactions will depend on the hash of the previous transactions. And thus, hashes can change until they are confirmed in a block, and potentially after confirmation, the blockchain is reorganized. In addition, clients might also actively scan for transactions to them, assuming a text out exists because the client created it previously unsafe. Sims your malleability. The first form of malleability is the signature themselves. Each signature has exactly one um, DR encoded SN1 uh, representation, but OpenSL does not enforce this. As long as the signature is horribly malformed, it will be accepted. In addition, for every ECDSA uh, signature, the signature is valid on the same message. As a block of 3,630, should say, as a block of 363724, the BIP66 software made it mandatory for all new transactions in the blockchain to strictly follow the DR encoded SNA1 standard. Furthermore, efforts are still underway to close other possible, possible malleability within the DR signatures. Signatures can still be changed by anyone who has access to the corresponding private keys. Uh, script sig malleability. The signature algorithm used in Bitcoin does not sign any of the six hit script sigs to create the signature. While signing the whole script sig would be impossible, the signature could, would be signed, signing itself. This doesn't, does mean that additional data can be added such that it will be pushed on the stack prior to the required signatures and public keys. Similar op drop can be added to leave the stack exactly as before prior to the script pub key execution. Preventing script save malleability is being considered as well. Currently, transactions with any, anything other than the data push operation in their script save are considered non standard or not related. And eventually, this rule may extend to enforce the stack have exactly one item after execution. However, done it, however, however doing that may be interfere with later extensions to Bitcoin. So, another definition, if you will. Uh, transaction, transaction malleability and mutability. The ability of someone to change unconfirmed transactions without, without making them val invalid, which changes the transaction text ID, making child transactions invalid. Uh, transaction malleability or transaction mutability. Not to be confused with uh, BIP62, a proposal for optional new transaction versions that reduce the set of known mutations for common transactions. So this comes from Bitcoin.org. Transaction malleability. None of the signature hash types protect the signature script, leaving the door open for a limited denial of service attack called transaction malleability. The signature script contains a uh, SEP 256K1 signature, which can't sign itself, allowing attackers to make non-functional modifications to the transaction without rendering it invalid. For example, a, a attacker can add some data to the signature script which will be dropped before the previous pub key script is processed. 
Although the modified key issues are non-functional, so they do not change what inputs the transaction user uses nor what outputs it pays, they do change the computed hash of the transaction. And since each transaction links to the previous transaction using hash as the transaction identifier, a modified transaction will not have the text ID as creator expected. This is a problem for most Bitcoin transactions where which are designed to be added to the blockchain immediately, but it does become a problem when the output from a transaction is spent before the transaction is added to the blockchain. Bitcoin developers have been working to reduce transaction malleability among standard transaction types, but a complete fix is still only... This isn't a problem for most Bitcoin transactions which are designed to be added to the blockchain immediately, but it does become a problem when the output from a transaction is spent before the transaction is added to the blockchain. Bitcoin developers have been working to reduce transaction malleability among standard transaction types, but a complete fix is still only in the planning stages. At present, new transactions should not depend on previous transactions, which have not been added to the blockchain yet, especially if large amounts of Satoshi are at stake. Transactional, transaction malleability also affects payment tracking. Bitcoin Core's RPC uh, interface lets you track transactions by their text ID, but if that text ID changes because the transaction was modified, it may appear that the transaction has been disappeared from the network. Current best practices for transaction tracking dictate that transactions should be tracked by the transaction outputs, it spins as inputs, as, as they cannot be changed without invalidating the transaction. And best practice further dictate that if transactions do seem to disappear from the network, it needs to be reissued, that it be reissued in a way that invalidates the lost transaction. One method which will, all, will also work is to ensure that reissue payment spins all the same outputs the lost transaction uses inputs. So this is there's a possibility of a concept of double spending with this transaction malleability. Um, also at the same time, it makes it difficult for you to maybe track your transactions across the network or even the history of it because the transaction ID has been modified. So you, you don't see where it's going, you don't know where it's going, and you don't really know the history. And it's a, a very silly bug, if you will, that's part of the Bitcoin protocol. And one of the ways that was seeking to fix that was BIP66, but also segregated witness. So this is from Ken Schiffer's blog. Bitcoin transaction malleability, looking at the bytes. Uh, malleability of Bitcoin transactions has recently been coming a major I issue. This article looks how transactions are modified at the byte level. An attacker has been modifying Bitcoin transactions, causing them to have a different hash. Recently, an attacker has been taking transactions on the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network, modifying them slightly, and rapidly sending them to a miner. The modified transactions often get mined first, preempting the original transaction. The attacker can only make trivial changes to the transaction, so exactly the same Bitcoin transfer happens as intended. The same amount is moved between the same addresses, so the tax is entirely pointless. However, each transaction is identified by a cryptographic hash, and even a trivial change to the transaction causes the transaction hash to change. And changing the hash of the transaction can have unexpected effects on the Bitcoin system. Also, this could be a way to maybe tag a particular transaction ID so that, I know, maybe a malicious actor can track a certain person's um, Bitcoin transactions. A quick explanation of transactions. A Bitcoin transaction moves Bitcoin request from one address to another. A transaction must be signed with the private key corresponding to the address, so that only the owner of the Bitcoins can move them. This signing process is surprisingly complex. The signatures are put in the middle of the transaction, and finally the tra entire tra 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 transaction, including the signature, is crypto cryptographically hashed, and this hash is used to identify the transaction in the Bitcoin system. The important data is protected by the signature and can't be modified by the attacker. But there is a few ways for the signature itself can be changed, but still remain valid. Looking at the modification transaction. To find a transaction suffering from malleability, I look at the unconfirmed transaction page. If a transaction is modified, only one version will get mined successfully and actually transfer bitcoins, and the other will remain unconfirmed and have no effect. Among the many conditions enforced in the mining blocks, the same bitcoins can't be spent twice, so both transactions will never be mined. This is why having two versions of transactions doesn't result in two payments. I picked a random unconfirmed transaction from February 11th to examine. Unfortunately, this transaction has been discarded since I wrote this article, breaking my links, but you can look up at the different one if you want. Blockchain.info uh, hopefully, hopefully includes a banner warning that, that something is wrong. Looking at the transaction, everything seems fine. 
uh, the confirmed transaction takes 0.01 BTC from uh, this particular Bitcoin address and transfers it uh, 0.0099 BTC to this other address. The, the, remainder, the remainder is a mining fee of 0.001 BTC. This transaction has a hash of BBA ending with 63F. The unconfirmed transaction takes 0.01 BTC from this designated Bitcoin address and transfer it to 0.099 BTC to the same designated uh, other designated uh, Bitcoin address. The remainder is a mining fee of 0.001 BTC. But his transaction hash is different, is D36 ending uh, with a FA61C. The script of both the transactions appear identical. Um, both transactions look identical. The Bitcoins are moving between the same accounts in both cases and the amounts are equal and the scripts look identical. So why do they have a different hash? A clue is the unconfirmed transaction is a 224 bytes and the confirmed transaction is 228 bytes. Looking at the derived transaction also fails to show what is happening. So you can't even see exactly really what is going on to pretty much it, you know, it's happening, which is kind of scary if you think about it. Even though the scripts are mostly in hexes and a while to sway them and parse slightly, which hides what's going on. We need to get the full scripts here and here. And so he kind of shows you the process of what's going on. Uh, there are a couple differences, um, and it's highlighted or read, but what do you mean? The script and the sig script sig, the signature of the transaction using the sender's private key. The signature proves that the sender owns the Bitcoins. However, the script sig isn't just a simple signature, but it's actually a program written in the Bitcoin script language. This program pushes the signature data on the execution stack, and the program from the unconfirmed script is interpreted as follows. The program from the confirmed script is interpreted as follows. So note the highlight differences. The original transaction had a byte of 0 by 48, which says to push hex 48 bytes of data. The modified transaction has um, 0 by 4D, which says it's the next two bytes are 48 and then 00, zero on the number of hash bytes to push. In other words, both transactions do exactly the same thing, push the signature, but the original indicates that this was 48, while the modified indicates that this was 4D, 48, and 00. zero. Pushing the public key has a similar modification, and since both scripts do exactly the same thing, both transactions are equally valid. However, since the data has changed, the transactions have two different hash rates. Why does malleability matter? Um, transaction malleability has been discussed for years and treated as a minor inconvenience. Both transactions have exactly the same effect, moving bitcoins between the same address. Only one transaction will be confirmed by the miners and the other will be discarded, so nobody gets paid twice even though there are true transactions. There are, however, three problems that have been turned up recently due to malleability. First, the major Mt. Gox exchange stated that they would stop processing Bitcoin withdrawals until the Bitcoin network approves and standardizes on a new non malleable hash. And apparently, they were using the hash to track transactions and would reset Bitcoins of the transaction they appeared to go through. This is obviously a problem with the transactions they go through, but with a different hash. Second, some wallet software will use both transactions to compute the balance, which causes it to show the wrong value. And finally, due to the way the Bitcoin handles change, malleability can cause a second transaction to fail, and this requires a bit more explanation. The failure to change in malleability. Uh, the Bitcoin protocol doesn't really have really move Bitcoins from address to address. Instead, it takes Bitcoin from a set of inputs and sends them to a set of outputs. Each output is an address. Uh, actually a script, but let's ignore that for now. Each input is an output for previous transactions, and each input must be entirely spent. As a result, if you have three Bitcoins and you want to send one of them, the other two Bitcoins get returned to you as change and sent to an address you control. If then you want to spend more some of that change, your second transaction reference the previous transaction that generates the change. References in by the hash of the trans first transaction. This is where malleability becomes a problem. If the first transaction has changed, the second transaction is not valid and the transaction will fail. Know that the change will still go to your proper address, so you can spend it as long as you use the correct modified transaction hash. So you don't lose any bread coins, but you just have the inconvenience of having a transaction rejected and you need to redo it with the right hash. So you have to do things twice, which is frustrating. The change problem only happens with, because some wallet softwares take a shortcut letting you attempt to spend change before the transaction has been confirmed. The reason is that since your changes from your transaction, you should be able to trust yourself, but that breaks down with malleability. Malleability has been known for a long time. Transaction and malleability has been known since 2011. We're now in 2017. And malleability used above was described four months ago here. 
There are many other types of malleability which are explained here. The script code can be modified in several ways while leaving its operation unchanged. The signature itself can be encoded slightly differently, and interestingly, due to the mathematics of elliptic curves, the numeric value of the signature can be negated in yielding a second valid signature conclusion. Hopefully, this will help to make malleability more understandable. If you want to know more details of the Bitcoin protocol, including sign and hashing, see my previous article of Bitcoin the Hard Way. And then here I'm going to read a little bit from the uh, BIP66, A Contentious Soft Fork, Stricter DR Signatures by Peter Will. This was done January of 2015. Abstract. Uh, the document specifies proposed changes to the Bitcoin transaction validity rules to restrict signatures to restrict DR uh, encoding. So motivation. The Bitcoin reference application currently relies on OpenSSL for signature validation, which means it implicitly defines Bitcoin's block validity rules. Unfortunately, OpenSSL is not designed for consistent critical behavior, it does not guarantee for bug-for-bug -bug compatibility between versions, and thus change to it can have affected Bitcoin software. One specifically cr crucial area is encoding signatures. Until recently, OpenSSL release would accept various deviations from the DR standard, and accept signatures are valid. With this change in OpenSL, it's made some nodes reject the chain. The document proposed to restrict valid signatures exactly what is mandated by the DER to make the consensus rules not depend on OpenSL signature parsing. A change like this is required if implementation to want to remove all the OpenSLs from the consensus code. And deployment. We reuse the double threshold switchover mechanisms from BIP 34 with the same thresholds. Um, so they're using BIP 34 to make this happen. Compatibility. The requirements to have signatures comply strictly with DRR and has been enforced and related policy by the reference client since version 8. And very few transactions violated are being added to the chain as of January 2015. In addition, every non compliant signature can truly be converted to a compatible one, so there is no loss of functionality with this requirement. The proposal has added the benefit of reducing transaction malleability. So here we go. Here are some real world actions with this. So. Big Club attacks the Bitcoin network with a transaction malleability. This was of uh, March 10th, 2017. Big Club, a small Bitcoin mining pool with around 4% of the network hashing hardware share, has suddenly decided to attack the Bitcoin network by malleating transactions and causing condition potential threat and nearly bringing blockchain info down. Uh, Bither, a Bitcoin wallet, publicly stated that evidence shows that transactions in block 456545 Mined by Big, by Big Club are malleable attack transactions. In the next Big Club block, the same malleability attack was undertaken. Army should software engineer at Facebook and Bitcoin Unlimited developer told CCN, It's currently possible for someone to modify a transaction that he or she is not the author of in the way that remains valid but that has a transaction ID. This is what Big Club did. They included modified versions of the transaction in the blocks in mine. Technically, this is a double spin as you have two different transactions spinning the same coin. However, this isn't what commonly understood as double spin because these two transactions send the coin to the same person. Because the transactions included in the block has a different ID, anything that relay on the transaction ID is affected. For instance, if you have transaction A and transaction B that spins A outputs in the meme pool, changing AICs will make it be invalid. And this has more disastrous effects as some layer 2 technologies such as LN or Lightning Network. This isn't something new or unknown that happened here. That's happening here. The big club has been, has been supporting SegWit, and I think they want to send the message that a malleability fix is required or these problems can occur. And I think the poor style from big, big club. Additionally, this is making a poor case for SegWit because it only solves malleability in specific use cases, not in general. So the attack could remain possible. He further explained there's no theft from Big Club, but the confusion definitely led to theft. Say I pay you with text B and you check it as valid and accepted, but B's spending coin from A and A is malleated by Big Club, then B becomes invalid. Now you don't have the money you thought you have anymore because of the backlog. This can happen a long time after our exchanges change took place. Uh, Big Club is a private pool with small miners. It's operated by James Hillard, aka Light Sword. It is a very strong proponent and advocate for segregated witness. Some, therefore, are calling the attack political. Uh, Amir Gunsur, a Cornell professor, asks, Is some miner doing a malleable attack to push for SegWit? With Washington Sanchez, OpenBazaar developer, stating, The best part is that after SegWit, they can still perform this attack. 
Uh, Sierra further told CCM that it is uh, disheartened to see attacks by miners on Bitcoin. Historically, miners have acted as guardians of the ecosystem and have, with very rare exceptions, refrained from engaging in activities that benefit themselves at the expense of others. This change proposed for ends of worse attack to come, especially if there's a fork. SegWit aims to address transaction malleability and allow for smoother operations on layer 2 technologies such as Lightning Network. The proposal, however, appears to be directed by miners with SegWit standing around 25% network share for many months. The main reason for this apparent rejection has more to do with SegWit transaction capacity increasing to only 1.7 megabytes after wide adoption. And most miners that express an, an opinion now seem to prefer Bitcoin Unlimited, which reached 40% of the network's hashing rate share over the past 24 hours at some point yesterday is nearly around 30% of the network share over the longer time period of one week. There are two further proposals besides SegWit that address transaction malleability. Flexible Transaction, FT by Thomas Sander, Bitcoin de Classic Developer is one of them. Uh, Sander publicly stated that Flexible Transaction does solve 100% of all the issues that SegWit solves. And more additionally, Flexible Transaction is much safer to use and more feature-ready than SegWit. Flexible transactions have been running on its own testnet for months now, and various altcoins are integrating it. Uh, Xanders told CCNN that FT has been merging to, in Bitcoin Classic, but needs to be hard fork. He told CCN that there is no activation or threshold for FT, as his block size is uh, Bitcoin Unlimited has not merged FT. It says uh, Sachet has put forth as Bitcoin Unlimited improvement proposal to implement SegWit as a hard fork, and that's why shouldn't be you merge FT instead. As Shashit said that the builds upon SegWit and FT, there's very little in BIP, uh, BURP 037 that actually can come from me. Most of it is just taking the good idea that are in SegWit and FT and making them work together. He further told CCN, with FT, every time you want to upgrade, you need to hard fork. With SegWit, everything is a soft fork. With this, we have one hard fork, but then we don't need any new hard forks to upgrade. The proposal is a prototype stage and has to go through a member vote and ask for a timeline. Uh, Sashit states that he may... He may have a working prototype by the end of the month, but it will need some time for full deployment. Once deployed, the Lightning Network can be launched with only difference in the block size debate. Returning just the block size as Bitcoin Unlimited appears to plan a merge of SegWit. So there you go. It's not something of theory. It does, in fact, happen. So I've also included in the show notes some other malleability attacks that have happened um, throughout Bitcoin um, history um, for you to peruse. Uh, but it just in general, it's just it's a dickish move to train to change the tax i uh, tax idea and change the, in essence the the history of a transaction. Uh, something the power that the miners have, and it's not something that you really want because it's important for uh, double spend not to occur, but for transaction history to be consistent and valid, if you will. And Segregated Witness seeks to fix this issue. I also have a link in the show notes, um, a PDF about uh, Bitcoin transaction malleability theory. It came from uh, a discussion of Black Hat in 2014. But that's that's what malleability is. It's just, you know, changing somebody's work, if you will. Uh, even though you don't get the coins and you don't, um, you can't access them. You're changing the text history, and it's just a change that is a vulnerability, is a bug, if you will. Uh, it needs to be fixed so that everything can be uh, consistent on the Bitcoin protocol. And you don't have the possibility of a double spin occurring or someone's uh, wealth being taken from them. Uh, so thank you very much for listening, and to the moon. This is Musings of the Shy podcast. I'm your host, Rosia Shy. This has been a Herosha Shine Space Odyssey Network production.